Hi, Vintage Guitar people. Welcome to Have Guitar, Will Travel, presented by Vintage Guitar Magazine, with your host, me, James Patrick Regan, otherwise known as Jimmy from the Deadlands. And today I'm speaking with John Notto from the up-and-coming band, Dirty Honey. We spoke in a dressing room on the San Francisco club that didn't survive the coronavirus, Slims. Dirty Honey is a band which harkens back to the glory days of 70s hard rock, Gibson Les Pauls and Marshalls. They've had the opportunity to open for The Who and have toured supporting Guns N' Roses, Slash, and Alter Bridge. Dirty Honey has been pretty prolific since the shutdown, posting on social media regularly. Our conversation includes how they hooked up with producer Nick Dedea, who's produced Bruce Springsteen, Pearl Jam, Offspring, Matthew Sweet, Rage Against the Machine, Train, and Stone Temple Pilots. We also talk about his guitars early on and getting his number one Les Paul and developing a relationship with Gibson. We talk about his amps, which are all Marshalls, and we talk about life on the road, headlining smaller venues, traveling in a Sprinter van. He tells me about moving from a small town in Maine to Los Angeles. John tells me about touring in Eastern Europe as a sideman guitarist before Dirty Honey. And finally, he tells me about how Dirty Honey came together. You can check out Dirty Honey at DirtyHoney.com. That's D-I-R-T-Y-H-O-N-E-Y.com. Please like, comment, and share this podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Vintage Guitar Magazine would really appreciate it. And please support Vintage Guitar Magazine and all the wonderful things they do, because they do so many wonderful things for us guitar players. Here's John. Oh, we're recording, by the way. We're here. Yeah. Hi, James. Oh, hey, John. How's it going? It's going good, man. I think it is. It is. Because you guys are doing great. Yeah, we're doing great. It's it's great. I've heard your tracks. Did you like them? What's your favorite? Rolling Sevens. Yeah, my man. Uh, that was a test, wasn't it? And maybe I passed. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you passed my test, yeah. Okay. People, so the, the listeners aren't going to be familiar with you. Um, so let's, of, yeah, let's start like, uh, they're from the moon. Yeah. And I'm John. Hey, John. And I play guitar, the only guitar, in Dirty Honey. Only so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We won't be holding auditions anytime soon. Oh. Well, you're going to need a rhythm guitar player. Yeah. Would well, you think so? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Aerosmith. I mean, I Aerosmith. I know a lot of them did it. Yeah. You know? Maybe later. Queen didn't do it. Zepp didn't do it. No. Hendrix didn't do it. No. Van Halen didn't do it. No. No. Okay, hold on. I saw David Lee Roth play guitar with Van Halen. Yeah, what? Ice Cream Man? Yes. <laughs> so you guys are traveling in a Sprinter. We are. A yep. black sprinter. A black sprinter. With a lot of dust on the bottom of it. Yeah, we don't really wash it. How tired are you? I'm pretty tired. You know, we had a good night last night. Um, we, we enjoyed the fruits of our day off uh, in the Mission District. Oh, cool. And then this morning I got up and I did the Alcatraz tour. Did you really? I did. Excellent. It was really awesome. I thought it was really cool. So Dirty Honey has an EP out. That's right. Produced by Nick Didia. Didia. Yeah. I didn't know how to pronounce the name. Oh, yeah. Now yeah, it makes sense. Something, yeah, it might look like Didia or something. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And, of course, he's done everybody. Stone Temple Pilots, yeah. Offspring, everybody. It's bananas. How did you hook up with him? We had a connection with him through our manager. There was a small handful of guys we explored. Um, he was actually, simply because he's in Australia, we didn't look at him first. Okay. Not in any sort of order of uh, prestige or anything. It was kind of like the first two guys we didn't like their deal, uh-huh. and um, you know he's our manager's brother. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and I think our manager wanted to tiptoe. He's like, I don't. This isn't nepotistic. I'll stay out of the way. But yeah. my brother's incredible. Yeah. Like, the only drawback is he's in Australia. Sure. And so we just did it very organically. We had a phone call, and then we had a Skype, and we were all just sold. And yeah. We're like, and you know, Mark, our singer. Uh-huh. Loves to play travel agent, so he, you know, he crunched all the numbers with the Airbnb and the wow. and the um, flights, and we're like, well, we're not going to spend that much to get there. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, it's really cheap, and so Nick, <clears throat> Nick was really great. It's just another testament to how special this whole thing has felt so far, and yeah. that is that, you know, he did the record up front, and then said, take the record and go get money with it, you yeah. know, and so. That kind of belief in us is amazing. It's amazing. It's and amazing. It, it gave us the opportunity. I mean, you yeah. know, everyone else wanted a big piece and too many pieces, and yeah. and not that they didn't deserve it. They were all great guys, but yeah. 
we don't have a label. We didn't have someone to waste a bunch of money. So we had to, we had to be uh, frugal and, and super efficient. And super efficient. And exactly. And, and Nick, and I think Nick thoroughly believed in the record. I don't think it was a favor to his brother because it actually, uh, you know, our manager, his brother is like, I've never done a record with Nick. Uh-huh. He's like, we've always been, he's the studio guy. I'm the label guy. We yeah. don't, you know, so it was really cool. And I'm glad that they got to, I'm glad we were there first. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's, let's go back. You're originally from Massachusetts or Maine? I'm from Massachusetts by birth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was 11, I moved to Maine. Okay. So I feel like a Mainer though. Okay. I don't know the difference. Other than I the, know, right? Yeah. It's uh, I, well, the difference, Oof. you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to go to see. Yeah. You had to be there, right? <laughs> yeah. What well, part of Maine? It's a big state. It's a big state. I am from I am from Aroostook County, which is in Maine is known as the county because it's the biggest one. I think it's the biggest county in like the entire Northeast, maybe. Oh, wow, it's huge uh-huh. and empty. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> humble beginnings, of course. You know. Sure. Uh, what kind of music did you listen to when you were growing up? Once the passion started, I was always picking at my mom's record collection. So music of her time and not mine. Uh-huh. You know, the seventies. And it, really the classic rock gods. And then that kind of like led to, if you're listening to that, and then, you know, it's, a, you know, it's artists you might like, and then you find out about Guns N' Roses, and then you oh, find yeah. out about, you know, 90s rock. And then, you know, um, so that that's kind of what that, it's always been, it's always been an old school thing. And of course, I've always been aware of pop music on the radio and stuff. How, how can you not be? You know? yeah. And what uh, was your first guitar? My first guitar was, my, my technically my first guitar was an Aria Telecaster that uh, was like 70s cream yellow. Sure. And it had like the worst action. I couldn't really play it. <laughs> um, it was a problem. So we traded it in. And the first guitar that I really learned how to play on was Epiphone Stratocaster Copy. Oh, really? Yeah. And it had sort of like an 80s kind of headstock on it. Um, that I still have it. It's red and white. It's it's pretty, you know, regular looking. You're going to play it tonight? Yeah. I should bring that out for one show one day. It probably would need a lot of retooling. It's been under a bed for a long time. But what, what kind of guitars are you playing tonight? Tonight, I primarily use um, my Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop Fifty Eight Reissue. Okay, from O three. Uh huh. That's just that's my that's my number one. Where did you pick it up? I picked that up in L.A. Actually. Oh really? Yep. Um, it was kind of an interesting purchase. I. Picked it up at Sam Ash, of all places. I was there to get picks, but I was fiddling around with the Les Pauls in there. And, you know, this kind of jockish kind of guy came up over over salesman a little bit. But he was pretty astute, and he was, like, hearing me play. And he was like, you style of playing, man. He's like, you're not going to want any of these. I got something from the back row, and he pulled this one out. Wow. He was totally right. It had a, a more organic, earthy kind of wood woody creamy tone that really suited my sort of blues rock yeah blues soul kind of tendencies and whereas all the other ones were kind of like a little more high output kind of like hard rock in last fall and sure. i know we play some pretty hard stuff but i think what makes it unique is the sound isn't the same as those like you know i don't have like slash's tone you know like yeah. he has a pretty brutal tone you yeah. know for a blues rock guy yeah you know? so so that yeah so I, I remember I was playing it for like 30 minutes or I don't even it might have been 20 minutes but I just looked up after a while and he was still sitting there and he was like <laughs> yeah he just looked at me and he's like so we, you want to break bread and I was like yeah and I had a 59 reissue and I wasn't in love with it and I was not playing it wow and so I had to sell that to get this one uh-huh. so I just I put like 700 down to hold it and I was like just do He's like, I can only hold it for. I was like, dude, just don't, don't, don't fuck me over. Yeah, no kidding. You know, and so can I say, can we swear? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, you know, just, just hang on, I'll get it. And uh, I managed to sell it. I managed to sell the '59. I sold it actually to Paul Stanley's Guitar Tech. No way. <laughs> yeah. Right on. How did you run into Paul Stanley's Guitar Tech? At Craigslist. You know, oh, he was just combing, and, yeah. and um, wow, I was trying. It was funny. I was trying to get more. And uh, he was like, well, you know, I got a deal with Gibson. I can get anything I want for blah, blah, He's like, call me when you change your mind. And, you know, two weeks rolled around. I was like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah. And the... Uh, yeah, sorry, the second guitar, yeah. The second guitar <laughs> you is... You can a- break your water. It's oh, okay. yeah. Oh, man, thank you. 
The second guitar is um, a Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s, okay. which came out this year, well, 2019. Uh-huh. So it's kind of the first run of standards by the new ownership of Gibson. Okay. It's great. Yeah. It's a really great guitar. And they're really cool, man. You know, I, I swapped out the pickups. They're like, that's awesome. I think they encourage, it's like the Harley world. Kind of, you know, where they're like, buy the bike, but go ahead and like, you know, alter it. Yeah, yeah. Mess around with it, man. Make it yours. And so, yeah, I switched out. I put some pickups in it that actually came with my my 58. Really? But they're like, sort of, I don't know what they are. Uh-huh. And they were sold to me as being this, you know, elusive old hillbilly sure. pickup maker from like Nashville. And I looked them up and I found them and I called them and I was like, how do I know if these pickups are yours? And he was like... I did all this nerdy research, and he was like, well, let me tell you. And he's like, no, any pickup of mine is going to have my name on the bottom. And it didn't have his name, so then I was just like... Heartbroken. A little bit. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, now I don't know who these pickups are, but they're, they're really good. And they, they, that, with those in that 50s, new 50s standard, it actually kind of screams like Slash's guitar. So sure. it's a little more high output. Right on. Do you have a deal with Gibson? Yeah, yeah we, uh, you know, it's, I don't know what we call it, but, you know... They're just really helping me out. So, yeah. you know, they're great over there. They've, yeah, the guys all come to the shows when we, you know, when we're in Nashville, they showed me the, they showed me the factory. Uh-huh. They've just been really, they've been really great. Did they say just pick out any guitar? Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things where we've just been kind of like pinging them, you know, for a while and just uh-huh. not being too pushy. And then I think when we just bubbled up enough as a band, I had a meeting in there and, you know, we talked, it was sort of this awkward Silas, they're like, well, why don't you play some guitars and take a couple home? And you know, yeah. and then, and the more I played, the more um, the guy's name is Cesar. He's like the, the yeah. head of brand marketing. Yeah, and he was. He's been so great. He came to Nashville. He's just that's my dude. And um, <laughs> also this guy Peter, who's my LA guy. Uh-huh. I love <laughs> Peter so cool. He's just so old rocker. You know what I mean? He's got long hair, and he's just like, dude, what's up? And I'm like, that's my. I want. That's the guy I want to talk to. You sure. know? Yeah, Cesar. He came through and. And Nashville was really cool. And yeah, that first meeting, the more I played, the more he was smiling. And I think cool. it was just like, this is a good fit. And yeah. then we, him and I played guitar together. He plays oh, cool. guitar. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, of course. Uh, I so, really like It's a dream come true to be oh, even, yeah. even working with them. And, and uh, it's just unbelievable. I, I want to represent them well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want, I want kids to do I want them to do exactly what I did with Gibson. Which oh, was yeah. like draw them on the cover and hope to get one one day. Yeah, exactly. You know? Because of me. Hopefully because of me, if kids want to get one. Sure, because of you. Yeah. But there's kids on YouTube copying their solos. I love it. It's amazing. And some of them are doing a little too good. I'm going to have to smack them. <laughs> amps, what kind of amps are you using? So right now, I'm jostling around between a JTM45 reissue. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm using a 50-watt Plexi reissue. Okay. Mark II. All, all Marshalls. All Marshalls. And then my spare is an 81 JCM 800. Okay. The first year they made them. Yeah. So. I'm familiar. Yeah. It's a good amp. <laughs> that's a good amp, man. I mean, that thing is, a, it's been on the road this whole time with me. And uh-huh. it's, you know, hasn't had any problems. How many people in the van? On your, on five. This? Five? Yeah. Only five? Only five. Wow. We're a small unit, man. I mean, this, we are an efficient unit. It's the four of us and our tour manager. And Pat. And Pat. And is Pat doing all the teching, the guitar teching? He does, yeah. I mean, I change my own strings. I don't make him do that. That's, you know, he's got so much to do. And, you know, he's there side stage for, you know, he's very alert and very aware. He, but we technically, I don't have a guitar tech yet, yeah. you know. But who does merch when you... Well, now we have like a venue merch person. Okay. This little end of the run here, we brought on a friend. He's just a great friend of the band. I mean, he's been coming to see us like when we just played covers in like bars. Oh, wow. You know, so. And he works in he works in film and production and stuff in L.A., so he's quite familiar on how to do it. Yeah, yeah, He's been great. So that's, that's great. We should talk about how the band got started. Shall we? What brought you to Los Angeles? Have a drink of your water again. The dream of this. <laughs> yeah, the water. Well, you know, th- this dream brought me to L.A. for sure. Uh-huh. Um, you studied music in Maine. I did, yes. I did some research. Yeah. Not very little. Yeah. And I knew I, knew I was never going to be like this, this scholastic type of musician professionally, uh, but it was a good ticket for being a relatively poor kid from the middle of nowhere. It was mm-hmm. a good ticket out of it. My grandmother was helpful with the bill. Didn't cover all of it, but it made it, you know, it made it, and it wasn't an expensive school. I mean, yeah. state school in Maine is just not that expensive. 
Like, I looked at the price tag of Berkeley, and I was like, okay, not going there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Berkeley's expensive. But yeah, got out of there, moved here. Took a little while, you know? We've been in L.A. for a minute. Why L.A.? Why not, like, Nashville? Why not New York? Why? What brought you to L.A. specifically? Well, really, it was a girl. <laughs> ah, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah, to be <laughs> totally truthful. She just had an opportunity... And I felt like jumping off the cliff with someone, and I'm not with her anymore. So shocking. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> shocker, shocker. As those things go, right. Yeah. But it was a good, it was a good way to launch to leap. I jumped right in to meeting a bunch of people in LA. My first thing I got into was the auditioning circuit in LA uh-huh. for sideman tours. You know, so I was like, oh well, you know, maybe I'll play for a pop star. Uh-huh. You know, I was kind of pretty much open to anything. Yeah. But the A dream in the back of my head is always this. Oh, yeah, know? of course. But I'm also, like, ultra picky, and so... You just, yeah. <laughs> you see a lot of people, you don't just jump in any band, you know? I was, yeah. It's like, I felt like I hated most bands, so I was like, I'm, you know... As long as I'm still hating everything, I'm going to do tours. But that was a struggle. I didn't really rise to the top of that in any way. But I was fortunate enough, I did get some touring experience in my belt. Like, I could... Uh, anybody that any we nobody know. really huge, but people who like did some national touring and some international touring. Okay, you know? wow. Um, I did play for this one artist named LP, um, but she's not big in America, but she's huge in like countries filled with white people that don't speak English. Uh, yeah. She's huge. Chile. Yeah. Argentina. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She's she's crushing South America. She's crushing the like the old Eastern Bloc. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's where we toured when I toured with her. Wow. Like that you know, the old Soviet belt. So that was that was cool. That was a good experience for me. Yeah, um, I bet that like that must have been just amazing. It was, you know. Go and she you know, she did like ten thousand tickets a night or something like that. You know, wow. of like people who can't even speak English, but it's <laughs> funny. So that it was a good experience. That was kind of the last thing I did. Right off the heels of that, and then we had just met Corey at that time, uh-huh. and then you and Mark uh, had just met Corey and Justin. So me and uh, yeah, I kind of skipped ahead there. Yeah, so I moved to LA. Yeah, I did a, did a bunch of sideman work, some touring, got some stuff under my belt. Uh, I had known Mark kind of fairly early on, and we always kind of played in uh, in, in LA. You in mean. LA, yeah. yeah. He was he really he was it was really his cover band that I joined and okay. then he had a CD of his own originals okay. that he had made and we did play those. Mm-hmm. They were a little bit more two ACDC derivative, but they were fun. Yeah, you know what I mean. But as far as like being taken seriously as an original act, the, the, the songwriting maturity wasn't there yet. Yeah. So did we, you have your own originals at that time? Me? Yeah. Not myself. No. Not to present to him. Okay. Um, yeah. Really, everything that I've written with the band has kind of been sparked out of being in the band. Okay. I didn't arrive with like, hey, here's all my riffs. Yeah, no. The, the, yeah. I would, the only reason I ask is because there's like so many monumental riffs mm-hmm. in, in your songs. So I didn't know if, yeah. you, if you'd have been coming up with those for years or... If well, I have been coming up with riffs for years, forever. I think what got tweaked along the way is I learned how to write simpler ones that are more yeah. iconic. That, that soon to be iconic. Soon to be iconic, right. <laughs> They're iconic in my mind, right? Yeah, of course. They already... And that really matured in the last two and a half years. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, some of the older riffs are good, too. I mean, well, actually, what am I saying? When I'm Gone's a very old riff. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that, you know, we had these other riffs, too. Songs that just never ended up having a good chorus. Uh-huh. was kind of the hard part, you know? So I had to learn how to write a riff. Mark had to learn how to write a chorus. <laughs> you know, and uh, I think we did it. So um, that that's how, so we met. Um, that's how the band met. That's how the band met. Yeah, I met Mark through a drummer that he had in that band. And he was like, I think he'd be good in this band. So we did that. We played covers for it, you know. We played the cover circuit. Uh-huh. Slowly, we just worked in, worked guys out who left or moved or what, this wasn't for them. And, and and reasonably so, there wasn't a lot of opportunity yeah. in our band for a long time. <laughs> was there ever another guitar player? Uh, in the beginning, when it was a cover band, yeah, there was another guitar player. And um, you just axed him. I didn't ax him actually. Uh, we were. It was like an axe fest because uh, he was a ripping lead player and I was a ripping lead player. So it was like it, it was it was two slingers on stage. Yeah. You said bike racks three o'clock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna, take, we're gonna take it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he like a lot of other guys went off and got big gigs. Oh, okay. That's what happens in LA. And so we're kind of like the last men standing a bit. <laughs> you know, like or the guys who 
you know, we just didn't get the big gigs and probably underneath all we actually really wanted to do this more than the big gig. Yeah, yeah. You know, rather than be the guy in the shadows sure. wearing a funny shirt. Yeah, <laughs> You're supposed to. <laughs> it's not a bad job, but you know. And then uh, the last piece of the puzzle to come together was Corey. For a long time, for a couple of years, there was like probably two years or something where before we met Corey, where it was me, Justin, and Mark, and uh-huh. it was just kind of like a round robin of drummers. Wow. So what time? Some of them never even wanted. To, they just played gigs with us. Yeah. And just be, you know. Yeah. And, we, and and the same way we would just have dudes play. And uh-huh. just kind of catch their vibe. We, yeah. we, we, that's how we did it. We didn't do a lot of rehearsals. We'd be like, hey, we get this gig Friday. Why don't you come down and play? Uh-huh. You know, if he was cool. Did cool. you have stuff recorded that you could just give them the Yeah, we, we could give them the old originals. We had demos we had made by that point. You yeah. know, we had a home studio. So all the stuff we were working up, we had some sort of yeah. recording of it. And uh, What year did you meet uh, J- Justin and Mark? Well, Mark I met in like 2012. Okay. So you guys have been together for a long time. Yeah, but just Dirty Honey wasn't born until 2000. Technically, I don't think we named it Dirty Honey until the end of 2017. Okay. Yeah. Corey's the beginning of Dirty Honey. He's the bench. He's the moment. Because all those other years was us. We had various names, and they were all sort of cover bandish or just not. Nobody was, like, really behind it. And we didn't have a Corey unit of four guys. Oh, okay. It was always the drummer. We couldn't, couldn't nail one that. down. Yeah. That was really just a period of experimentation. Yeah. We, were, we were writing together as three. Justin and Mark were right together, and, you know, and it was just sort of feeling it out, like, like what's our, how, how are we going to do it? In between the insanity of trying to pay your bills in L.A. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere in California right now. Yeah, actually, yeah. When Corey came along, he came along in the same fashion any of the other guys came along. You know, he was just like, played a gig with us. Yeah. But then he was like, this is cool. I, if you guys are trying to have a band, I want to be in a band. And he met all the benchmarks. You know, he looked good and yeah. played great and actually wanted to be in a band. Yeah. So it was like all those three things, you know. Oh, very important. Very important. You guys are off to record a new record? Yes. In? Australia again. With? with Nick Didia. Yeah, exactly. And you had an opportunity to work with Dave Cobb. We did. It was also incredible. How was the studio? It's amazing. And I, every guitar? So much history. Did you see the video? I did not see the video. Oh, man, you got to see that. So if you see the video, that guitar I'm playing uh-huh. is a 52 gold top. That, oh, that's uh, Dave's. Uh, uh, and it's modded to 57 gold uh, gold top specs. Yeah. So they rerouted it for humbuckers. Sure. And he had me playing through like a 76 GMP. Wow. Straight. No boost for the solos, just... Which is what I love about the 50-watt plexi I've got going right now. I don't need to do anything. No pedals? Play the, I have pedals, but they're not boosts or like added overdrives for solos. Uh-huh. I just, all I got to do to solo is just move to the front of the stage. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's just the amp screaming and it's just that dynamic tone, you know? Cool. I should let you go. We've gotten the yeah. word. Yeah, we've gotten the word. Yeah, we got the word. I could podcast for hours. That's... Well, you know, <laughs> I don't mind hanging out. But... Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, John. Pleasure to meet you, James. We're shaking hands right all now. All right, yep. I'll be at the show tonight. Yeah, man. I hope you uh, stand your hair straight up. <laughs> oh, I well, thank you. You got it. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Have Guitar Will Travel. You can catch up on all the things I'm doing at thedeadlies.com. And I'm on all the social media platforms as well. And please support Vintage Guitar and all the wonderful things they do because they do many, many wonderful things for us guitar players. Thanks. Please subscribe. Please tell a friend. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>